Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. If we deposit $100 in an account, and let's say we get a really great rate, we're gonna just use an easy rate to sort of work with here in this problem. Let's say we get an interest rate of 40%, um, and instead of getting simple interest, where we just, at the end of the period of the loan, we get all of our interest. Let's say we are compounding the interest quarterly. So every quarter of a year, in other words, every three months, we are getting some of our interest. So instead of at the end of a year getting all of it, each quarter we get some of it. So if I look at my interest rate of 40%, that's sort of easy to break up into four pieces here. You can imagine each quarter, if I want to get 40% total in interest, then I'm going to need to get 10% per quarter. So if I get 10% each quarter, that will add up to a total of 40% overall. So at the beginning of the first quarter, I have $100 that I put in. At the end of quarter one, at the end of three months, I get 10% of that as interest. 10% of that is $10. If I add that together, then my accumulated value, my balance in the account at the end of quarter one, once I get that $10 in interest, is going to be the 100 plus the 10. So I'll have $110 at the end of quarter one. The way compound interest works versus simple interest, I am now taking this accumulated value of 110 and moving forward with that balance to quarter two. So the next time I compound interest, it will be based on the $110 instead of the $100. So we're really getting interest on our interest with compound interest. So I begin quarter two with $110. 10% of that would be the interest. So 10% of that is $11 now. So we get $11 in quarter two in interest, and then we end up with $121 at the end of the second quarter. This is now considered my balance for the beginning of quarter three. So we begin quarter three with $121. We will get 10% interest on that which gives us $12.10. We add those together, and now we end the third quarter, we're nine months into the year, with $133.10. And we begin quarter four with that amount. So then again, we get 10% interest in quarter four, that's $13.31. We add that together, and we get $146.41. So with this amount, think about what you might have expected, right? With an interest rate of 40% and depositing $100, you might have expected 40% to be $40 and then you get $140. You can see that by compounding the interest, getting interest on our interest, we technically get a higher rate than what is quoted to us. Rather than having to do this every time, let's sort of look at a pattern and we'll generate a formula for this. So if I start with a principle of $100, and then the first time I compound interest, I'm taking my rate, which was 40%, and I'm breaking it up into four pieces, right, if I said quarterly. So I break my rate up into that many pieces, and I'll multiply by that. So this is what gave us our 110. We're going to multiply what we had by itself, but an additional 10%. So we're actually using this operation of multiplying by one plus the rate over the number of times we're compounding in the year squared. After the third compounding, it will be like multiplying by that amount three times, and then by the end of the year, it'll be like multiplying by that four times. So you notice that this number here is the number of times we compound. The number on top here is the original rate. We're splitting it up into that many equal pieces. And then at the end of one year, we will have compounded that many times. And so if we write a formula that sort of mirrors this, we get that our accumulated value equals our deposit, the principal, times one plus our rate divided up into some pieces, and then we had an exponent that was the same as that number of pieces, and that was just for compounding for one year. If we were going to compound more than one year for multiple years, we wouldn't just do this process n times. We would have this many times, but then we would also have a certain number of years. So the number of times we would compound would be multiplied by the number of years that we're doing it, if we're doing this over multiple years. So we get a formula that looks like this for compound interest. We get A equals P times the quantity, one plus R over N, all to the NT. So both N and T are in the exponent. A obviously is our accumulated value, or what you can think of as the final amount, the ending balance. P is our principal, that's our starting amount, our initial deposit. Our lowercase r is our interest rate, usually given to us as a percent, but we'll use it as a decimal in the formula, since that will usually be easier to type into something. We have n twice in the formula. n is the number of times that we're going to compound per year. So for us in the last example, quarterly compounding meant we were compounding four times per year. And then t would be the number of years. So if we're compounding for something other than one year, we'll need to plug that into the formula as well. 
Here are some common compoundings that you'll see. Annually just means once per year. Semi-annually means twice per year, so every six months. We've already talked about quarterly, which would be four times a year every three months. Monthly, there are 12 months in a year, so that would be 12 times per year. Weekly, there are not exactly 52 weeks per year, but pretty close, so weekly is considered to be 52 weeks in a year, and then daily generally will be 365, even though that's off just by a little bit too. Depending on the fine print of the loan or the account that you have, the company or the bank that you're working with may also occasionally consider daily to be compounded 360 times per year instead of 365 times per year. That just basically has to do with the idea that the average month is approximately 30 days, and then 12 times an average of 30 days gives 360. So you may notice on some accounts, instead of being charged at the first of every month, you're actually charged every 30 days, and so that payment date may fluctuate back and forth some days as you move from one month to the next. Let's do some examples here. I've got my compound interest formula in the top corner here. If we deposit $1,900, we get an annual interest rate of 2.7% and we're compounding annually. What is the balance after six years? So first thing that we'll notice that this is going to be my principal my annual rate, 2.7%, tells me that R is equal to 0 0.027. Remember, we'll move over two decimal places when we put this rate in the formula. Compounded annually tells us that we're compounding once per year, so N is 1. And then the balance after six years, this part tells me that we're going to use t equals 6. Solving for the ending balance, the accumulated value, that will give us A equals... 1900 times the quantity 1 plus the rate, which is 0 0.027 over 1, compounded annually. And then n times t in the exponent would be 1 times 6, and that would be 6. If we plug that into a calculator and round to two places, since I'm using United States dollars, you may be using something else if you're watching the video, of course, but I would round to two places, so I'd get $2,229.34 for my answer on this one. Here's another one. If we deposit $4,350, our annual rate is 3.25% compounding now monthly, and we want to know the balance at the end of eight years. So this 4,350 is our principal, our rate 3.25 tells us that as a decimal, our rate will be 0 0.0325, moving it over two places. Compounding monthly tells us the number of times we would compound per year is 12. And then this last part here in the question tells us that t is going to be 8. So if I plug into my formula, I would say that my accumulated value is going to be $4,350 times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.0325 divided by 12, and then my exponent will be n times t, 12 times 8, which is 96. And if we plug that into the calculator and round to two places, for this one I will get $5,639.66. Here's another one. Now notice the difference here. It's still 43.50. It's still 3.25% interest rate. It's still compounded monthly, but now the balance is given to us in months. So the real difference is going to be in the n times t here, and we want to just talk to you about how to deal with this. So think about what n is. This right here, again, says that n is 12, but our time is given to us in months. So if I were going to change 43 months into years, which is what we express t in, then t would actually be 43 divided by 12, because there's 12 months in a year, right? So 43 divided by 12. But now when I do n times t, that's going to be 12 times 43 divided by 12. Well, times 12 and divide by 12, that's going to reduce to 1, right? So really, if you multiply these together, you just get that n times t is 43. And so maybe an intuition that you start to get is that n times t is actually the total number of times we compound. If we compound monthly and we compound for 43 months, we should compound 43 times, right? So let's go ahead and put all that in our formula. A equals 4350, allowed for this is the same, times 1 plus 0 
over 12 because monthly. And then we are compounding 43 total times. If we plug that in the calculator and round to two places, then we will get $4,886.50 rounding to two places. Let's look at one more of these, a similar one. So we have a deposit of 13,000. This is our P. Annual rate is 4.9%, so R is going to equal 0 0.049. Compounded weekly, number of times we're compounding per year is 52. And after 39 weeks, so you can either say that T is equal to 39 over the number of weeks in a year, which is 52, and get that this is 3 fourths or 0.75. Um, or you can just sort of get the idea that, well, we're compounding weekly and it's 39 weeks, so my n times t should really be 39. But even if you take this and you multiply it by that, you should still get that for your exponent, I think, right? So our accumulated value is going to be 13,000 times 1 plus the rate, which is 0.049, divided by the number of compounds per year, 52, and the number of times we're compounding, n times t, is 39. So if we plug this into a calculator and we round to two places, we will get $13,486.40. Okay, hopefully this helps you understand how compound interest works, why it's more and why it's different than simple interest. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next video.